I'm an avid cyclist. It's the best way to get around the streets of Manhattan. And it's safer than a lot of people think. Probably. The most incredible parts of the bicycle to me are the spokes. Thin metal rods that support the wheel hub that keeps the frame of the bike off the ground that holds the substantial weight of the rider. We may imagine zonules to be like these spokes, holding the crystalline lens suspended in the globe. But of course, our surgical experience often contradicts this. Just think of pseudo-exfoliation. Maybe a better analogy would be to picture the lens zonules as strands of spaghetti. Spaghetti, when uncooked, has substantial tensile strength. One can hang a fairly sizable weight from a thin strand of uncooked pasta without breaking it. But exert even a modest lateral force, like the weight of a ballpoint pen, and Perhaps it's best not to exert any lateral force on the zonules. Perhaps we should employ a technique that does not call for any lens rotation. I don't like divide and conquer, but it does demonstrate that it's possible to crack a lens with a very short groove. If the width of a divide and conquer groove is about one millimeter, and the length of each of the grooves doesn't exceed seven millimeters, then each of the arms of the cruciate pattern must be no more than three millimeters long. This means that it's possible to crack a lens with a groove as short as three millimeters in length. So let's start out by making a three millimeter groove right in the center of the lens. Traditionally in a chopping technique, the lens would now be rotated. Instead, let's embed the tip of the phaco at a very acute angle, about half a millimeter from the crack. Now we use the second instrument, in my case the side belt chopper, to push the opposite half away and to create about a half a millimeter gap. Now the embedded corner is depressed towards the optic nerve to prevent snagging on the rexus and retracted to the main wound so that the edge of the nucleus clears the edge of the rexus. Now we tilt the retracted corner of the lens upward toward the cornea and unscrew the hemineucleus anteriorly for 90 degrees so that a quarter of the nucleus sits atop the opposite hemineucleus. This usually means reacquiring the nucleus once with the phaco tip to complete the 90 degree turn. Since the phaco tip and the crux of the cybel constitute two point fixation, aspiration doesn't contribute anything at this point. So I shut it off. At this point, we have a quarter of the nucleus that has already been separated and is above the capsular rexus. We'll reposition it a bit more posteriorly before we begin to phaco to protect the cornea. The technique is very zonule friendly and in the event that we're not able to perform all of the steps, nothing is wasted but a little bit of time. I try no spin extraction on most of my cases now. And when I'm finished, I ride my bicycle home. <laughs>